Hey guys, happy Gina Graham here. I just finished this bulletin board. It is about complementary colors. A lot of you probably already know what that means. When you put certain colors together, they complement each other. That means they look the best and most vivid next to each other. So purple and yellow are complements of each other. So I made this butterfly here in those colors. I want you guys to look at this and kind of take a visual picture of it, and it will help you remember the complements. Red and green are complements of each other. Orange and blue, like the koi fish and the pond, are complements of each other. Different shades have different variations of a complement. So come to my door here and you can see a color wheel. All right, this is the rainbow put into a wheel. And you can see that each color has an opposite. So orange, the opposite of orange is blue. The opposite of yellow orange is a blue violet. This is a really good way to think about color. And when you're making artwork, think about what sets each color off the best. Welcome to my art room. We're going to do a koi fish painting today. I've been having fun thinking about koi fish. They're orange and black and white, and they almost have like a cow hide pattern on them. I have some on my monitor in back of me. They are the coolest fish and the coolest colors. And they're usually in blue water, so they're a perfect, a perfect um, composition for us today using our complements. So today we're gonna to focus on orange and blue. Um, I've been trying to think of simple ways to make a complex shape, and I came up with this cute little koi fish shape. Um, we're gonna just practice a koi fish first with a pencil and a piece of paper, and then we'll jump into rendering it onto our bigger painting. So all I need you to do is draw a line. At the top of the line, I want this kind of a mark. It's not straight. You can see there's a little arc to it. Now, here's the base of my fish. This is the head of my fish. We're going to come down here like this and go to the base. Can you see it? And here and go to the base. It comes to a point. Now, here are their beautiful fins. Now, the koi fish have four other fins, two bigger ones at the top and two smaller ones at the base. So you can have these fins go any which way. And then here, it goes like that. Now, their eyes are set to the side. So what I thought I would do is put a line there and a line there, and then like a pocket shape here and there. We're doing kind of a bird's eye view of this fish. And you're looking at the top down into the pond. Now about halfway, well, three quarters of a way down, you're gonna put your marker or your pencil and you're gonna go like that. That's the top of their fishy fin. Now you can do some lines if you want to. That's that fin that's on the top of their body. And that's it. You can put some lines into their smaller fins. Uh, I don't love that shape, so I'm gonna bring it out a little bit like that. So that's what you're aiming for today, for the koi fish. Now, this is the painting I just drew out. You'll notice the koi fish in a pond, they're under things. And today I want to have you layer the koi fish into kind of the bottom of the pond. There's lily pads sometimes on the top. There's flowers on top of those lily pads. So how do you draw something that has depth like this? I'm gonna show you. All right, so this, we're gonna tuck away in a minute. I'm gonna come back to this. Here's my paper. It is like an off-white kind of color. We're gonna be drawing with white chalk today. I hope you can see it, we'll see. Um, 
So we're gonna just draw the fish like we did before. Can you see that at all? Yay, so there's my line. I'm gonna decide where the head of the fish is and where the tail of the fish is. I'm gonna put the head of the fish right there. Remember that line at the top? So we're aiming for the tail. Up here, you're gonna pretend that's almost like a road and you're gonna try to mimic the line and go to the tip like that. And go like that. Like that's the center line in a road almost. Okay, remember the tail? The tail is two almond shapes. Now, the almond shape can come off the side of the paper. This is a just a snapshot of a koi fish pond and sometimes we crop things. So that's good and I want that to happen for you. If you run out of room, just come right off the page. Okay, these top fins, it's almost an almond shape again or an eye that almost looks like an eye shape there. Now these are little, they're right there, like that. Okay, line here, line here, pocket shape, pocket shape. There's those eyes of the fish. Now you're coming down a little ways and you're gonna go like that. That makes that top fin. Okay, there's one koi fish. You can draw those lines in if you want to. This is chalk, so it's gonna erase out very easily. Okay, let's put another fish in there. So you're gonna start with a line. This is gonna be the top of my fish, like that. There's the tail. Remember, this is like a road, the center line of a road. So try to mimic that line again. Go like this and make it go to the tip. Go like this and make it go to the tail, just like that. Now, I've seen pictures of all these fish. They're just in a frenzy in the middle of the water. Sometimes they bump each other. So when we do their fins, it might touch the other fish. It's okay. And I'll show you why it's okay in a minute. Okay, those, that bottom tail, those little ones here, little one here. All right, let's get those eyes. Line to the side, line to the side. Pocket shape, pocket shape. Come down a little ways and go like this. And there's that fin again. All right, that back tail might be, there might be a buddy coming, swimming this way. So let's put like a back tail here and just have that fish swimming right off the page. All right, so I want you to be thinking about what lily pads look like. Here's some lily pad kind of shapes. Let's just draw the lily pad in there. That's just that little part. It's, the lily pad is coming off the page in some ways. Um, sometimes lily pads have flowers. We're doing a bird's eye view, so you're looking down on it. Let's do some flower shapes on here with your chalk. Um, right through here, I'm gonna do half of another lily pad shape, like this. And it overlapped the fish, didn't it? I think I'll put another flower shape here. Now, what you're going to do is decide the lines you want to keep. I've layered lily pads on top of fish and flowers on top of lily pads. You're going to take a blue or a black crayon and you're going to start outlining the things you want to keep. Let's start with the last thing we drew first, the flower. All right, so I'm going to decide which lines I want. Since we use chalk, I can erase them out later. There's my flower. Here's a flower. The thing I drew last, I'm tracing first. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, I put two flowers on there. Then I drew lily pads, right? So now let's go to the lily pad and trace the lily pad. One lily pad, two lily pads, 
Now this lily, lily pad is covered by the flower. Three lily pads. All right. Now go in the lily pad and take your finger and erase out everything. Smudge it. Smudge it. Smudge it. All right, and you have some lines left, don't you? Now, if I was a bird and I dove into this picture, my beak would hit the flower first, the lily pad second, and the fish and the water would be third. Now, wherever the lily pad and flower is not, then you're gonna trace those lines. That's how you can make everything look stacked. Now, right here, my fin, this fish hit this fish. So I've got to decide which fish is on top. I'm going to have this one be the top fish. So it's going to be traced like this. And I'm just going to cover the lines. I'm going to trace here. Now, I don't want this line traced with my crayon. And you might not have drawn everything perfectly, so you can adjust your lines a little. See where that shows through? You're going to want to put that there because the fish is under the lily pad. Okay, here's the tail of this fish. I'm going to trace that in. I've got my next fish. Now, I'm not going to cover that because this fin is, uh, is on top of his little face, so I'm going to skip it. And I'm going to keep tracing. Now, this is complicated, and you may have never done this before, so don't get too frustrated. Promise? All right. Now, this little fin is going to be a little bit under my flower. They're turning out so cute. Okay, half the eye, the eye. Now I wanna erase this out because his fin actually starts more like in the middle of his body. So this is where I'm gonna start tracing. I'm gonna put my lines in. Like that. And I have a layered piece now, don't I? So I have my koi fish down deep into the pond. I've got these lily pads that are a step above them and then the flowers that are a step above the lily pad. So for today, all you're going to do is paint the water and we're going to let that dry and do the other parts later. All right, this is temper paint and it's right out of the jug. I'm gonna add a little water to each one. Mix it up, because I don't want it as thick as it was. Now, we're gonna paint water by using these three colors. Normally I would wash my brush out, but I want to get to this quick. I want you to go into your piece. Um, you're going to paint all the water areas today. Little brush for little spaces, big brush for big spaces. I want you to use a variety of the colors to make the water look interesting. We're not just going to use one of the colors. We're going to use all of them. Dark, medium, and light. Now we have some chalk still left on here, but the cool part about chalk is that it'll just dissolve. All right, doesn't this look fun? Isn't it pretty? I should say, doesn't it look fun? Not, isn't it look fun? <laughs> It's surprisingly hard to talk and do art at the same time. I'm forgetting how to use words. Now I want a variety of blue in here. That's why I'm grabbing three different shades. 
I've got a light blue, medium blue, and a dark blue. And remember we put some water in there to thin things out. And that's all I want you to do today. Fill in all the water parts with variety of color. All right, thank you for watching. Keep filling in all those water parts and I'll come to you with the next step another day. We'll paint the koi fish and we'll do all the little extras. Thank you for watching. Be happy. Do art.